Hello and welcome. This is the start of a new series here on this channel. One where I will try to build a monster within the Pathfinder 2nd Edition rules, either due to popularity, intrigue, or by community request. Due to Baldur's Gate 3 and the sheer amount of hours many of us have pumped into the game, it only feels right that the first creature we build here on this channel is the ever unnerving Mind Flayer. The space squids with a hankering for cranium spaghetti, these tall purple floating beings are known for their use of telepathy, magical resistance, and psyche attacking spells. So let's look at their 5e stat block and pull it into Pathfinder using the level appropriate DCs and numbers. The standard Mind Flayer is a CR7 in 5th edition, so let's use that as the basis in Pathfinder as well. I could imagine a 4 man level 5 party fighting one Mind Flayer with around 2 to 3 thralls at 3rd level, which is around 120 to 140 experience. That's a fairly difficult boss fight with a character who could very well escape and become a reoccurring problem in the future. In 5th edition, the Mind Flayer has tons of stats dumped into Intellect, Wisdom, and Charisma. Two kinds of physical attacks, though one is converted into a 3 action ability in Pathfinder, a Psychic Cone ability, and some magical properties including resistances and innate spellcasting. Bringing them into Pathfinder 2nd Edition, their stats should look like this. Roughly the same stat outline, but with larger numbers that feel appropriate for a being of this caliber within the Pathfinder system. This is comparable to many other creatures at level 7. From this point onwards, we'll be using the current set of Building Creatures rules. Here, we can find the average Mind Flayer's fortitude, reflex, and will saves that should fit their physical and mental abilities. Give them 12 fortitude, around 15 reflex, and a staggering 18 in will. These creatures are masters of the mind, and to imagine any number lower just doesn't feel right. For their perception, something a bit above medium, but not quite high, and a 16 fits that bill. Mind Flayers probe with their minds more than they probe with their eyesight, and unlike in 5th edition, Dark Vision here has no range limit. Next up is Resistances, Immunities, and Weaknesses. While the 5e variants get Magic Resistance, which is an advantage on saving throws, in Pathfinder we should tackle this in a different manner via a plus 2 to all saving throws against spells. This means that non-magical DCs all have a higher chance to be effective, which would feel incredible to stumble upon as a player, as not needing to roll twice on the DC save can hide the ability. While we are covering magic resistance, the one reaction I gave the Mind Flayer is called Wizard's Bane, which is if a spellcaster is using a spell with the attack trait, the Mind Flayer can put up a shield that gives them a plus one AC bonus to that one spell. However, if the spell does multiple attack rolls, it only impacts the first attack. Weaknesses and immunities, however, I don't think there are any applicable. A true Mind Flayer's weakness is anything with the Mindless trait, as almost every single attack and spell has the Mental trait. So Mindless beings and swarms would be completely immune to a Flayer's abilities. And moving on to the Mind Flayer's movement, they have a speed of 25 feet, which is lower than its 5e's variant of 30 feet, but I made this change because movement in Pathfinder can be done multiple times, and a Mind Flayer sprinting 90 feet while levitating just feels like a horror I do not wish on any individual. They do, however, have a form of permanent levitation, with a passive that helps outline what this may include. Levitate isn't the craziest of spells in Pathfinder when cast on oneself, but it is incredibly useful when in the right environment and is just a means of making the Mind Flayer's tactics all the more potent. Looking at the Mind Flayer's skills next, they are exceptional at arcane and deception, but everything else is relatively tame. The rest are moderate for a creature of this level or low like the athletic skill. Moving on to the Mind Flayer's tentacle attack next, 
I gave it the grab trait, so for an extra action, they can grab its opponents. And it does a solid chunk of damage at 2d8 plus 6, but it is all mental damage. To round out alternative damage types, the Mind Flayer does have access to the Telekinetic Projectile, which covers bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing options from afar. But the real win condition attack that needs some setup to achieve is the three action ability called Extract Brain, which has a lot going for it. First off, this ability has requirements to even perform. The target must either be restrained or incapacitated in some way, with a passive ability that stipulates that if a creature is under a spell's effect with incapacitation from a Mind Flayer, this attack can be used on them. Make a tentacle attack roll for all three actions. If it lands, it does 5d8 plus 10 piercing damage, double on a crit. Also, if it is a crit, the target must make a fortitude save. On a success, they are stunned 1. On a fail, they are stunned 2. And on a crit fail, they die outright. Do keep in mind that for this to occur to a player, they must be restrained, take up the entire Mind Flayer's next round, and be critically hit and then critically fail their save. This ability is best when used on a Thrall or an incapacitated target, as it removes the restrained requirements to allow for fast consumption, which a Thrall can be ordered to approach the Mind Flayer so it doesn't even have to approach its meal. Now open your mouth and let's have a look at that brain. No, 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 not that mouth. Furthermore, if this attack lands at all, the Mind Flayer heals 4d6 plus 6 hit points. So thralls being consumed are an easy snack on the go when the Mind Flayer needs quick healing. And if the target survives their brain being noodled all Lady in the Tramp style, but are unconscious, they are dying 2 instead of dying 1. Extract Brain from 5e is similarly brutal, and I wanted it to be the best option in Pathfinder as well, but with a good reason to use it amidst combat, which is the heal. In 5e, it feels like a narrative choice on how to punch your players emotionally, where in my version it is a sound tactical decision as well as creating an impactful narrative. Finally, we had the last big action to talk about, Mind Blast. While the initial damage is dangerous at 66 plus 3, doubled on a crit fail, it also imparts Stupefied 1 or 2 depending on how poorly the creatures rolled on their save. In 5e, this ability has a 5 to 6 round recharge time, which is incredibly long, but the ability also does a 1 minute stun in that system whereas my version has a 1d4 plus 1 rounds before they can use it again. I was debating using Stunned again in Pathfinder as it's an easy choice for a 1 to 1, but because there are other negative conditions to play with like Stupefied, Proned, or other options, it felt more interesting to cover more conditional bases with this ability. For the most part, that covers everything that the 5e Mind Flayer has, save for its rather tiny amount of spells at their disposal. Detect Thought, Levitate, Dominate Monster, and Plane Shift. Luckily for us, Pathfinder is chock full of spells that have the mental trait within the arcane tradition that feels like something the Mind Flayer would do. Also, this is the baseline Mind Flayer that I am giving you. As my friends have pointed out, Mind Flayers typically have spells similar to a wizard, so this spell list can be easily tinkered with as the GM sees fit. Something that is missing as a core spell from 5e is Detect Thought, as nothing exists quite like it in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I'm tempted to make this an action with the same range as their telepathy of 120 feet, but what is available is the 3rd level Mind Reading spell and making it at will, which the GM can flavor to be that the Mind Flayer knows what that player knows, depending on the success of the spell roll. 
And while I won't read out every single spell's description that I gave the Mind Flayer, I will read out the spell list and point out my favorite ones. For cantrips, we got Daze, Telekinetic Hand, and Telekinetic Projectile. First level spells, Befuddle and Command. At second level, we have Touch of Idiocy, Warrior's Regret, and At Will, Telekinetic Maneuver, which is such a perfect spell to give the Mind Flare for messing with the party. Being able to disarm the marshals all while being shielded from the spellcasters is tactically appropriate for Mind Flayers. At third level, we have Mind Reading and Levitate at Will, plus third level Fear and Agitate, both of which I love. A third level Fear impacts up to five creatures, so potentially the whole party if they are within 30 feet of the Mind Flayer. But Agitate is such a fun ability despite being non-lethal, as at third level, this spell does 6d8 mental damage if the affected target doesn't burn actions to run around. At fourth level, we have Confusion and Charm, both of which are brutal in different ways, Charm being Incapacitation, and Confusion can turn a party member against everything around them. And finally, we have 6th level spell Dominate, which speaks for itself, and 7th level Plane Shift, which unlike 5e's version, has a 10 minute cast time. So this spell can't be used suddenly to allow the Mind Flayer to escape. The party needs to be distracted with spells, puzzles, or the environment to allow the Flayer the time to use this spell. So, that's the finished Mind Flayer for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Now. With all the knowledge fresh in our minds, let's consider that 5th level party versus a Mind Flayer and its thralls. And let's say there are 3 of them for a full 140 XP fight. One thrall and the Mind Flayer have the high ground, which the thrall is using a bow to attack the party from afar. The other two thralls are on the floor. One is a sword and board combat style, while the other uses a two-handed weapon. Since the thralls are level 3, they have an average AC of 18 and around 40 hit points. They are considered incapacitated to the Mind Flayer and treated as a friend. So the Mind Flayer at any point can command a Thrall to approach them and extract their brain for quick healing for their round. The players would have to handle the martial Thralls while someone with ranged attack shoots the Mind Flayer. When the Mind Flayer takes damage from the ranged attack, it would order the Thrall to defend them, granting cover, while keeping it within reach at all times. The Mind Flayer would cast some spells causing the party to get disoriented, but good tactics and lucky rolls puts the Flayer in a tough spot, as it's reduced to half its HP. The Flayer would spend one round casting Confusion or Fear to distract the party, and on the next round, consume the Thrall's brain and then flee afterwards. Since it is levitating, make sure the party has a difficult time following the Mind Flayer's backup plan to allow it to escape and give it time to cast Plane Shift and return home, thus concluding the fight. What other creature would you like to see get a stat block from another system, mythology, or even a particular series you enjoy watching? Leave a comment down below with your suggestions as, should any pique my interest and I have enough knowledge on said idea, I'd love to make a video on what it is you all have in mind. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe while you're at it. Perhaps even the bell maybe? In the near future, I plan to set up a Patreon where you can get the token blanks and all the homebrewed creature stat blocks that I create for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. But I will do a dedicated video on what that Patreon will entail when I am ready and confident in what I can offer. But with that, thank you all for watching and until next time, may the dice be in your favor.